Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about what could possibly be the best smallmouth lure of all time and that's going to be the tube. Uh, we're going to break down everything you need to know about your rod, reel, line selection, how to rig this tube up. We're going to go out on the water, we're going to fish it, we're going to try and catch some smallmouth bass with it and ultimately decide is the tube one of the best smallmouth lures or the best smallmouth lure that's ever been made. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. So for starters, let's run down why I think the tube is probably one of the best smallmouth lures that has ever been made. The first thing that makes it probably one of the best ones that's ever been made is proof of this box right here. Um, this is my tube box and there's every single color you can imagine in there. There's all different things that you can mimic with this. I mean, there's even white tubes that are out there. Granted, you're probably not gonna mimic too many bait fish with it. That this, that's more of like a sight fishing deal. Um, but we have June bugs and blacks for dirtier water. Green pumpkin is like a go-to root beer colors to mimic different types of crawfish and gobies. There's other uh, smoky colors in here with different types of glitter that can also mimic different types of gobies. Sculpins on the bottom, creek chubs, other types of minnows that those fish feed on. Um, it's really just an ultimate bait to mimic anything that's down there from crawfish, bugs, insects, minnows, gobies. You can do it all with this one bait um, and smallmouth really just cannot resist it. And there's also many different ways to fish it to mimic those different types of forage. The one way we are not going to be talking about today is going to be um, snapping a tube. We can do another video on that in the future if you'd like to see that. Um, but this is going to be with like a lighter tube head, mostly just dragging bottom with it or gently hopping it along the bottom. Um, this is the way I'd fish it in like a small creek, stream. Uh, we're going to be fishing in the Pittsburgh rivers today, so that's how I'm going to fish it down there. That's This is going to be the setup for doing something like that. On the Great Lakes, you could even do that using this technique as well. Um, it's really just an all around tube setup. And the other reason that I feel that the tube has been really well, a lot of people are fishing Ned rigs lately. And this is essentially the Ned rig before a Ned rig. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a Ned rig and acts a little bit differently in the water, but it ultimately does the same job. And now with everybody fishing Ned rigs, this bait has become overlooked and not a lot of people fish tubes as much as they used to. Tube used to be like the hottest smallmouth lure ever. Um, and a lot of people have replaced it with the Ned rig. So if you go back and throw the tube again, I've been fishing places like the Pittsburgh rivers. Those fish get pounded with Ned rigs. They see so many Ned rigs down there now that that bait's out um, and it works so well down there. This thing, I went down, we fished last weekend with it, and it actually surprised me how good it worked. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very good bait when those fish haven't seen that in a while. Um, I used to fish creeks with this all the time back in college when I'd wade creeks. It's like my go-to smallmouth bait for doing that. It's just a really good bait to do that with. So let's talk about the setup real fast. Um, this right here is the Cashin Icon spinning rod. This is like their shaky head rod. It's a 7.2 medium heavy. I picked this up as my tube rod, mostly because all my other rods were rigged up at the time. And I was like, ah, oh, we'll throw it with a little bit extra backbone. This rod seriously surprised me and I will permanently be using this as a tube rod going forward. I've been using this rod for a lot of things if you've seen on the channel recently. Um, I've been skipping wacky rigs on docks with it. I've been drop shotting brush piles with it for largemouth bass. Now I'm using it as a tube rod. It's like the most versatile spinning rod I've ever had. Um, and it's really been something I've been reaching for a lot lately. So if you wanna check out that rod or any of this stuff that I'm gonna be talking about in today's video, all of it will be linked in the description below. You can check all that out and you'll be supporting the channel a ton by purchasing any of the products through the links down there. I have a Shimano Sedona with 15 pound lime green braid on here. I've talked a lot about why I use the lime green braid and the benefits that it brings. And then I have a 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader because this thing's gonna be dragging on the bottom, hitting a bunch of rocks. I went with a little bit extra abrasion resistance and the water was fairly stained the day that we were out there fishing. Now, tube head that I have in here is a quarter ounce. That's what I was getting onto the bottom with. You can go heavier if you need to, you can go lighter if you need to. It really depends on where you're fishing, depth of water, current, all that kind of stuff. Um, I was using a quarter ounce, that's usually my go-to. The other one that I have a lot is like a 3 eighths ounce. Um, I've run out of the quarter ounce heads, so all I have left is the 3 eighths right here. Um, so that's what we're gonna be rigging the bait with because you have to rig it before you put it onto your rod, which 
I ended up losing one out on the water and there'll be another little section of rigging out on the water, but this is how you're gonna rig one up. So you're gonna take this tube head. The first important thing to note about your tube head, I fish a flat line tie, not one that's vertical and in line with the bait. I want it flat so that it'll crawl over rocks and stuff a little bit better. And I want a 60 degree line tie. That's gonna allow it to glide over stuff a little bit better. If you have a 90 degree straight line tie, it will work but you'll get wedged in rocks a little bit more because you'll have the head of the tube sticking out here and your lime tie will be up like this and it'll get underneath of a rock and wedge itself in there rather than the 60 flat climbing over the rock and working its way through. Um, that tube box, I have a million different tubes in there. I don't know the brands of all of them. I just bought that as a tube kit years and years ago and as I've gone through the tubes, I've replenished them with different stuff. Um, Anything from a two and a half inch tube all the way up to a four and a half inch tube. There's a billion sizes out there. They all work. It depends on the size of your bait fish. My go-to is like a three and a half or a three inch tube somewhere in there. These ones, I picked these up at Sportsman's Warehouse before I went fishing. These are just the Dry Creek uh, custom baits tubes. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to link those ones. It'll depend on what's on the Fish USA website. Um, I'll find something that's similar to those if they're not on there. And then when you take one out of your pack, we were just using a green pumpkin, purple and copper in today's video. You're gonna basically flip your tube upside down shake all your tentacles out until you can find the opening and you can use your tube head to kind of wiggle them around like that. And then once you've found the opening of your tube, you're just gonna take the eye of the hook, put it down inside the tube head there, and just feed it all the way to the front until it presses up against the front of your tube. And as soon as you get it up to the front there, you're just gonna pop the eye out and make sure that the tentacles are all straight on the back here and your hook is in line. So that's it. And then you would just tie this on and you're good to go. And you'll notice that tube head is a little bit fatter than that quarter ounce one on there. Um, they make tube heads that have a fatter head that basically look like a goby more than a crawfish or anything like that. You can get different tube heads that are designed that way to mimic different types of forage, or you can use different weight sizes because the bigger the weight, the bigger your tube is going to be because you'll have that weight inside the head. So you could go to like a half ounce and really bulk up your bait to make it look like a goby. So now that we got that, color selection entirely up to you dependent upon your bait fish uh, in your water. You can use like a root beer to mimic perch. You can use it to mimic crawfish. You can do green pumpkins. This one, I knew they were feeding on crawfish. Uh, there's no gobies in that river, so there's crawfish. There's like creek chubs, sculpins, um, other types of little bottom crawling minnows and suckers and stuff like that. A lot of those fish are dark colored to blend in with the bottom. So I went with the green pumpkin um, and a lot of the crawfish have some orange to them. So I went with the orange glitter. Um, just a little bit of a confidence thing that I've done with tubes for the years. Every time I fish a green pumpkin tube, I usually almost have orange glitter in it. Probably doesn't make a difference, but that's what we went with for the day. So we got it all tied up on the rod. Let's head out on the water and see if we can catch us a couple fish. All right, so now that we talked about how versatile a tube can be and how effective it can be for smallmouth, let's go ahead and actually fish it around and see if we can catch us a couple smallmouth with it. So right now we have that one we we're talking about right there. That's just like a copper and purple green pumpkin uh, tube, three and a half inch. It's a slender tube and we have it on a quarter ounce head. Um, there's multiple ways you can fish a tube. We're gonna talk about that as we fish today. The one thing we won't be doing is called uh, snapping a tube. And a lot of times when you're snapping a tube, you fish a much heavier head. So we went with the quarter ounce just cause all we're trying to do is maintain bottom contact. If you were gonna snap a tube or if you wanna see a video on that, hit comment down below and I can make a video. Uh, but if you're snapping a tube, you're using like a three quarter ounce weight in 10 foot of water and you're really snapping that thing up off the bottom but that's not the way we're going to be fishing it today there's one right there that actually feels like a good one too oh he's not that big we're fishing down here in the rivers in pittsburgh so the fish aren't going to be giant today but we're going to try and catch some fish uh, and there's a pretty decent one for the rivers in pittsburgh and i know that's sad to say but our fish do not get very big down here in pittsburgh um, go ahead We'll get him off the hook. We'll throw him back and we'll keep talking about the tube. All right, so the other thing is, once you catch a fish, you can see that my tube head is all messed up here and it's actually outside the bait. The nice thing about a tube, you literally just pull on it 
and kind of feed it back up your line here and see where the line's coming out of the head. Right there, got it right back lined up like we did with our initial rigging and we're ready to fish again. So tube's back on the hook and we're gonna get back to fishing. As we said, we're throwing this quarter ounce weight because we just wanna maintain bottom contact. And then we're gonna show you two different ways to fish it. One is gonna be hopping it on the bottom, not stroking it or anything like that, just gentle hops, kind of imitating a crawfish scurrying along the bottom or like a small bait fish darting behind the rocks. Um, and then the other way is going to literally be dragging it on the bottom, like a football jig, or anything else. So like right here, you can see, this is the way that I'm gonna drag it. If you really have inactive fish, or you have like gobies in your uh, body of water where they never leave the bottom, or you have fish that really just like to eat food that's on the bottom, this is the way I'm gonna fish it. And I'll just reel up my slack and kind of drag it towards me a little bit. The only downfall is that right there. You're gonna get hung up a lot when you drag it. Um, and especially because you have an open hook, so we pop that off that snag. If you ever get a snag and pop it off like that, let it sink right back down to the bottom. And a lot of times there'll be a fish on there as soon as you get it back down to the bottom. But didn't get a fish that time. So we're gonna go ahead and keep dragging this thing. And it's literally like you'd fish any other jig. A tube is basically a jig, but much more finesse and geared towards smallmouth. Not saying you can't catch largemouth or spotted bass with a tube, uh, but it's not one of my favorite techniques to use for those other two species of fish. Um, so mostly, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it. Oh, we lost that one right there. Um, we were just dragging it slowly on the bottom. He got it again. He's little. That one's just a little baby playing with our tentacles on our tube. So we'll show you that one more time, just to make sure you get the dragging one and then we'll go to the hopping one. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it right back out here. Um, I'm fishing behind a giant rock that I can see up here and they're basically using this as a current break. And we're just gonna go ahead and drag it down behind this rock. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull. And you can see we already got hung up a little bit. You can kind of pop it free. Um, a lot of times if you drag upwards, it'll keep that um, eye of the bait upwards and over top of the rocks as well. And that will keep that bait from getting snagged down in there. If you pull sideways or down, uh, downwards, you're gonna be pulling it downstream into the rocks and it might get hung up a little, a little bit more. Um, also, the tube head you choose will help you catch more fish as well or get less snags. Um, today we're using a 60 degree line tie that's flat and that will allow it to climb over rocks and down through. If you use a 90 degree or one that's in line with the bait itself, it will wedge itself a little bit more sometimes because it has a little bit more of a, a gap there that it can pin itself under a rock. So. We're gonna keep dragging this and see if we can get us another one. Okay, so now we're gonna talk through the hopping technique and this is really what I like to do to catch a lot of fish. We'll work our way up through this little stretch here too once we get done with this. Uh, but all you're gonna do is let it sink down to the bottom and you're gonna hop it like you would any other Texas rig and we got snagged on that big rock so we might have to go get that. Oh, it came off. So again, let it sink down to the bottom. Sometimes a fish will pick it up. Nobody on there so all I'm gonna do I'm gonna hold my rod like 60 degrees, 45 degrees out from me and just give it little hops off the bottom and it'll kind of dart up, drop back down and keep it within like six or 12 inches of the bottom. And I'm just gonna give it short little hops like that and see if I can get one to come get it. A lot of times with a tube, what happens is when it leaves the bottom, it'll spiral back down. So if you hop it up off the bottom and that spiraling motion looks like it's something coming up and dying, a lot of times fish will come grab it uh, because they think it's food and an easy meal. So that's what makes the tube so effective. And we got one doing the little hopping technique there. Again, not a big one, but we're gonna find some bigger ones than this guy here. So we're gonna get back to fishing with the tube. We're gonna show you some more fish catches doing that hopping technique because that seems to be the way they want it today. We're gonna throw him back because he's bleeding. See you, buddy. So this time I'm actually gonna cast it on the outside of this rock and see if we can get a bigger bite maybe out a little bit further. As you can see right here, that's the big rock up there that we're fishing, but there's a big one right here we just caught a fish off of. There's a couple out there. Um, so there's a lot of rocks right here that these fish can use as a current break. So we're gonna go ahead and just hop our tube down this little current seam and see if there's any more that are loaded up in it. And the other big thing with the tube is you just wanna make sure you're maintaining bottom contact. 
Um, what the tube is mostly imitating, I know we talked about it can be used to imitate bait fish, like shad and stuff, you can get a white tube. Usually that's more geared towards like sight fishing. If you're using a tube, you're usually using it to imitate smaller bait fish or crawfish or gobies, stuff like that. All those fish scurry along the bottom. Creek chubs, sculpin, all those are types of bait that this thing can imitate. Um, other little river minnows, literally anything that these fish can eat. And a lot of times they're just gonna kind of scurry in behind these rocks and not leave the bottom much. Uh, the only unfortunate part, like I said, open hook tube, you're gonna get snagged up a lot. But we're gonna go get this and then keep fishing some other areas and see if we can catch some more. There's another one. This is nuts. How many fish are down here in this current break? That's a good one. Oh, there was like 10 following them. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Hold tight. We're gonna get this one off and then we're gonna catch those other ones. They were literally trying to eat the bait out of the fish's mouth. I, sorry I dropped the fish. I'm literally so excited to get my bait right back in there. I can't believe how many fish were in there that came up with it. Um, let's go ahead and get him off. And again, this tube has caught like 10 fish already. It's all beat up. We're gonna slide it right back on the hook, get it right back in there and catch one of those other ones. But not a giant, but for Pittsburgh rivers, that's a pretty good fish. And that is what your tube will look like when it is done and you cannot fish it anymore. So unfortunately, the one downfall with a tube is you're gonna have to cut this off and tie it back on again. So you better have a long leader as you work through your tubes. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get this cut off get a new one on there, then we'll get back to fishing and try and catch these fish sitting right here. So these are the tubes we're using right here. These are the Dry Creek Custom Baits. <coughs> this is the three and a half inch creek tube, green pumpkin, purple copper. Um, literally nothing special here that you could buy any tube on the market and it'll work just fine. I like the Strike King ones a lot as well. Um, but this is all I had today. I was lo looking through my box to see what I had. To be honest, as much as I'm saying the tube is like an awesome bait for smallmouth, I've fallen into the trap too of fishing a Ned rig and all that kind of stuff as well. And while a Ned rig would still catch those fish, honestly, a tube's pretty fun to fish and I enjoy doing it. And sometimes just giving them that different look helps a lot. So all you're gonna do is kind of stuff your tube head up in there. You're gonna feed it all the way up to the head and pop the eye out and then make sure all your skirts are straight and that's literally it. And then you're just gonna tie it on with your favorite knot. Um, I'm gonna use a Palomar knot here cause that's what I always use. It's my go-to knot for pretty much everything. And then we're literally ready to fish again. So while it sucks, you gotta cut it off every single time to tie a new one on. It takes 30 seconds. It's really, really easy to rig it up. Honestly, I'd rather cut a tube off and tie one back on whenever it's done then retie a whole drop shot rig. It's actually, it's easier than tying a drop shot rig. I'll put it to you that way. So we got it all ready to go again and we're gonna get right back in there and catch us some more. There we go. That feels like a better one. He's not giant. Another keeper, but not big. Where are you? There you are. All right, as much as I would love to keep pounding these fish on this tube and catching a whole bunch of bass, we got some other videos we got to get filmed. Uh, we had a late start today and the sun is starting to work its way down. So while we got the fish biting, we're gonna try and get some other stuff done. But I hope you guys enjoyed talking about how effective a tube can be for smallmouth bass. If you want to, everything will be linked down below. If you wanna buy any of this stuff, support the channel. That will all be down there available for you to purchase. And if you wanna see a video talking about the Ned Rig, which is the replacement to this guy, go ahead and check this video out right here. Use them in parallel, tandem, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and you'll be catching a ton of smallmouth bass no matter where you are. Those are two of the most effective smallmouth baits you can get. Like I said, Pittsburgh Rivers, not big fish, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hit that like button down below and subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching.